Hello everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm really happy to have you here with me today where we are going to make ourselves a feast. We have company coming over for dinner tonight and I love to make as much uh, of the meal as I possibly can from scratch when I'm going to have company over because it's really fun to share with people some of the things they might commonly buy at the grocery store made from scratch. So we're going to be making three different kinds of lasagnas today. We're going to make a chicken lasagna, a tuna lasagna, and then just a regular marinara sauce style lasagna. And we're going to make homemade noodles. We're going to make some French bread for some garlic toast and some homemade croutons for the Caesar salad that we're going to make with homemade Caesar salad dressing. And then for dessert, we're going to make homemade ice cream with some strawberry rhubarb pie filling on the top of it that we made together the other day. It is eight o'clock in the morning right now, and I really do like to try, and I've shared this before, but I like to try to have dinner done in the morning because that is when I have most of my energy. So I try to utilize that energy and get most of the work that I need to get done, done from the time I wake up in the morning until around one or two o'clock in the afternoon. This is particularly true if we're going to have people over for dinner because I like to spend the afternoon getting the house all clean and ready. It is Saturday morning today, so my house is very quiet because everybody sleeps in on Saturday morning. So I have a little window of time to be able to get this done before the house gets moving as well. So we're gonna start with getting our French bread going. I have shared before that I have been on the hunt for a really good French bread recipe. I've never found one that I have thought was absolutely perfect, but one of you sent me a recipe the other day that's, I think it's called the Preppy Kitchen or something like that. I'll put a link to it down in the show notes below. And the recipe looks fantastic, so I thought we would try that one today. Normally, I don't like to try new recipes when we're going to have company over, but bread is something that I have quite a lot of experience with doing. So I looked at this recipe and it is fairly basic, so I thought I would give it a go. So let's get into that first. Okay, so for this recipe, we just need some standard bread making ingredients. So we're gonna need flour, of course, some sugar, some olive oil, yeast, salt, and water. Did I say flour? We also need some flour, of course. I have our mixer over here. I am going to double this recipe, so we're gonna start with four cups of warm water and into our mixer. Four tablespoons of sugar, and I got my glass mason jars that we got at Costco the other day all filled up. The one thing I will say about these jars, if you're looking at them in, at Costco, I do love them. They're a nice thick glass and they're just pretty, is that the lid is not a twist on lid. So pick it up from here rather than from up here. So this is taking a little bit of training in my house because we're used to using mason jars with the twist on lid. And obviously it could be quite the mess if you pull it from there. So that's the only thing to keep in mind about it, but I think they're really beautiful jars. So four tablespoons of sugar into our water, two tablespoons of active dry yeast, two tablespoons of olive oil, and 11 cups of flour. I'm gonna have to go refill my flour bin here. When it comes to activating your yeast, you only really need to do that if you have a question about whether or not your yeast is active or not. I know mine is, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Normally to activate it, you just let it sit with the water and the sugar for around 10 minutes or so, just to see whether it's gonna start foaming or not. But like I said, I know mine's good. So I'm just gonna add a couple of cups of flour. We'll do three to start. make that four. We'll do four to start. And then we're going to add our salt. Three teaspoons of salt. One, two, and three. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix this together. Turn that off and go fill up our flour. Okay, so now we are just going to add the rest of our flour until we have a nice sticky dough that starts to pull away from the sides. 
Normally what I do is I just rise my bread dough right in my Anchor Shrimp Mixer here. It has a lid that pops over the top of it. It's fantastic, I love that, not having to dirty the extra bowl. But I am going to make a couple of batches of pasta this morning. And while I like to mix mine on the counter, I do do the kneading in the, mix in the mixer just because it's a fairly firm dough and this works really well for that. So I'm going to take this out, put it in a greased bowl, put it in my oven on the bread proof option because it is a little chilly in my house this morning. We got down to just above freezing last night. So it was very cold. Let's see where our dough's at. Oh, definitely need some more mixing. I was hoping to be able to plant my garden this weekend, but it is quite cold and drizzly. So I'm actually going to wait, just checking the weather forecast probably until Tuesday before I really start part, uh, planting out. I have planted my peas and my onions already out in the garden, but the rest of it needs to get into the ground, especially all those potatoes that you can see over there by the cook stove. I have 300 pounds of potatoes to plant and I would have preferred to already have those in the ground, but with the cooler weather, I decided to just hold off a little bit. So we will have the whole entire garden planted by, at least with everything that's gonna go um, seed-wise, like direct seeded stuff, in the garden by Friday. And I'm probably next weekend going to move all of my tomato plants into the high tunnel because the high tunnel is, or because my tomatoes themselves are starting to get fairly stressed because they have outgrown their pots and I don't want to pop them up. I just want to get them right into the ground. So there's going to be lots of fun gardening happening here on the channel over the next couple of weeks and I can't wait. So we have two cups of flour here. So we're going to add three eggs to this. A little bit of salt. and a little splash of olive oil. You don't need to add the olive oil, but it does make a nice smooth dough. And this part you can absolutely do in the mixer. I just like doing it by hand. And we just wanna mix this up until it forms a ball. And then we're gonna put it in our mixer to do the kneading of it. So we have our pasta dough here that I've been letting rest for the last 20 minutes or so. And now we're going to run it through our pasta maker. You can, for just doing lasagna noodles, just roll this out with a rolling pin, but I just find that this little machine does a better job. So I'm just gonna flatten that one out. Keep these guys covered so they don't dry out. We're gonna run it through number one a couple times. Fold it. And again. So I'm gonna work all the way up to number six on this. And this is an Atlas pasta maker. Nothing beats homemade pasta. It's just the best. So as you can see behind me there, I have um, some mozzarella cheese grated up for our lasagnas. We have lots of steps that are time consuming today. So I'll be back with you again when I get all this rolled out. All right, friends, let's back you up so you can see. So I have all of my noodles all done here and I was just playing around with my little cutter. Tried this before, that looks pretty, but I do like bigger noodles for my lasagna. So I'm just gonna cut these to size for the pans that I'm using. And this is just making it easier on myself. So when I cook them, it's just really easy to assemble them. And then I have all these pieces lightly floured so that they don't stick together. So there we go, that's gonna be perfect. So this, this is basically the most time consuming part of this entire thing. It just assembling everything at this point, which shall be pretty easy. Our bread has now doubled and looks all bubbly and beautiful. Look at that. Powder my hands a little bit. Punch this down. 
So we are gonna transfer our pasta from here so we can use this space for making our French loaves. Okay, so we're gonna divide this up into four, as even as possible <laughs> without weighing it. Okay, so now the recipe tells us we are going to roll these out a little bit into rectangles. Okie doke. Now we're going to get a tray so we can set these to rise. Okay, so now we're going to set these aside. We're going to cover them again and let them rise for another 40 minutes until they're visibly puffed up. And we're having sheet pancakes for breakfast. So let me get those hot from the oven. I shared making those sheet pans on a video, I think last week. Basically, it's just whatever your favorite pancake recipe is. I do have a good one. I think it's on my website. If not, it is in my cookbook. Um, and then you just bake it in the oven for around 15 minutes on a sheet pan. And it is just a much more efficient way to make pancakes. And I agree with those of you that commented saying that you just love the crispiness of a fried pancake on the stove. And I do too, and we do do that sometimes. But when we are having a busy day, it's so much more efficient to just cook them all at once. So now we are going to wait again for our bread to rise here and uh, for Dan to get back from town because he just went and picked up a couple of the ingredients that I needed for today's recipes. So when he gets back, we will assemble our uh, lasagnas. Okay, our bread is ready. I have the oven preheated to 375. Well, it just hit the temperature now. We take these very carefully off. Our bread is nice and poofy and bubbly and looks beautiful. Oh, and there's Dan. Hey, hon. You got all my goodies, do ya? Yeah. All right, you just put that right down there. It's okay. Thank you. So I have a bread lane here, which is basically just a razor blade. You can use a sharp knife too, if you have a sharp knife. And we're going to score the top of our bread. Look at these. No, look at these lobes, hon. Aren't they pretty? Okay, so now we're gonna pop these in the oven. And when I put them in the oven, I already have a bowl sitting at the, on the bottom rack and I'm going to add around a half a cup of water and apparently that is what's gonna give us our crispy crust. Okay, so we have our water. And now we're gonna set our timer for 25 minutes. All right, now comes the fun part. So we're gonna make a double batch of white sauce for both our tuna fish casserole, or not our tuna fish casserole, our tuna fish lasagna and our chicken spinach lasagna. We're gonna use the white sauce as the saucy part of that. And we had spaghetti for dinner last night. So I have a whole bunch of leftover spaghetti sauce that I saved exactly for this reason. So that's, it is a spaghetti sauce with ground beef in it. So that's gonna be our sauce for our regular lasagna. All right, so we are gonna add just about half a cup of butter to our saucepan, maybe a little extra. Buttery white sauce is the best. I'm gonna get this melting on the stove. And I fried up a little bacon earlier, so I have all the bacon grease in my cast iron fry pan up back there. So I'm going to fry our chicken breasts up 
in that. And I'm gonna fry them up whole so they retain some of their moisture, they don't dry out too much. And then we'll slice them up for our lasagna, <clears throat> excuse me, um, after they're fried up. This is going to be one yummy dinner. I'll get my dishes laid out here, whole milk and flour for our white sauce. And we're going to add a little shake of ground nutmeg, some ground mustard, and a tiny little pinch of cayenne pepper to our sauce. Oh my goodness, our bread is looking beautiful. That's exciting. Okay, so now we're gonna add our flour and make our roux. We'll let that start to get a little bit foamy. And then we're gonna add our whole milk. We wanna make a big pot so we can have a nice saucy lasagna. And I let my sauce start to thicken before I add more milk to it. Little pinch of nutmeg, pinch of mustard powder, and a little tiny bit of cayenne. We're so close to our bread being done, but we're not to open the stove until we're fairly confident it's done because we don't wanna let all of that moisture out of there. All right, there is our white sauce. Set that aside. Now we're gonna add another bunch of butter because butter is delicious and we're going to fry onions and mushrooms in this. They look so good. Look at that. Woohoo, woo, that's hot. Definitely the most beautiful looking French bread I have ever made. I did not think to get down to get some fresh mushrooms, so we're gonna use canned mushrooms in this sauce instead, which will be just fine. So the real test of this bread is going to be how it tastes, but it sure looks good. Look at that, really happy with that. All right, now we're going to add a little bit of parsley to this. We're going to add a bit of our white sauce and a little heavy cream. That smells incredible. Chicken's getting close to being done. Just filling my pot over there for our noodles to cook. Looks perfect. Mmm, smells so good. 100% a win. Excellent recipe. I'll make sure that I link it for you down in the show notes. It is so good. I'm so happy. Since we have our cutting board here already, we'll get our chicken sliced up. Okay, so we'll put our chicken in our remaining sauce. Whew, that's warm. I'm just kind of winging this recipe. So I think what we need in this is some roasted garlic. I think that would just elevate it to a whole other level. So I'm just gonna pop some garlic into the oven to roast up while we're putting the rest of this stuff together. And then we'll add that roasted garlic and roasted shallots to this, and then we'll be able to put it together. I just popped a piece of that chicken in my mouth. Mmm. Chicken roasted in bacon grease has got to be the, my, one of my favorite ways to eat chicken. I'm using the tuna lasagna recipe out of the Cook's Kitchen Bible. This was my very first ever cookbook that my mom bought for me back when I was, I think, 19. And I lost it in amongst all the moves we've done over the years. And one of you beautiful humans found it and sent it to me, which I'm so grateful for. It was such nostalgia going through this recipe book because these were some of the first recipes that I ever made for my family. They, they're excellent recipes in here. If you do have a chance to find this cookbook somewhere, I would highly recommend picking it up. It's fantastic. Um, so I just wanna see if we need Parmesan. So this one's just gonna be sprinkled with Parmesan. So we are gonna grab some peas because we need peas for this one. Okay, next up, we need to cook our lasagna noodles here. So I'm just gonna put these and boil them for probably two to three minutes. And that's all it should take, because they're nice and fresh. I 
I have so many noodles here, so I'm gonna do it in two batches so that I don't end up with a big stuck together mess. These are just about done. It really doesn't take long to cook fresh pasta. All right, we have our noodles all cooked up. Grate up a little bit of Parmesan. Okay, now for the fun part. I'm gonna take a bit of our sauce. Noodle. I thinned my sauce out a little bit with a little bit more cream because it was pretty thick and I wanted to make sure I had enough for uh, one layer in the middle and then one layer of the sauce on the top. Okay, now a little sprinkle of Parmesan in there and then some tuna. So this is basically a glorified tuna casserole and <laughs> it is so good. The last time I made this, Dan said it was the best thing that I had ever made. So we got our tuna on there and then we're gonna add some frozen peas, a little bit of mozzarella and some more noodles. A little bit of Parmesan on top of that. And then a little parsley. One down. So I'm using some cottage cheese and some ricotta cheese for our filling. Add a little bit of our Parmesan to that. And our garlic and our shallots are just about finished over there. I'll throw a couple of eggs in here to help hold everything together. Pepper a little salt and done. Look how yellow that looks from the eggs. So here's our sauce from last night. So just put a little in the bottom. Layer on our noodles, our cottage cheese layer, whoops. Little matzah. some more meat. It's gonna be a very saucy lasagna. And then lots of mozzarella. And we'll do a little bit of Parmesan on the top of that. A little bit of parsley. Second one down. Whoa, that one's got some weight to it. Last up, chicken lasagna. Does smell good, doesn't it? Okay, we're gonna add this deliciousness right into our chicken mixture. And we'll stir that into there. Okay, now, I don't have a ton of sauce here. I wonder if I can liquid this out a little bit too. I'm gonna try just to get a bit of the sauce without the chicken in it for our bottom layer. Okay. Now our noodles. Okay, and then we're gonna do a cottage cheese mixture layer. Okay, there's our cheese layer, little mozzarella. My noodles are starting to stick together a little bit. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt because this could have used a little salt in the sauce. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit on there, a little pep, and our last layer of noodles, which is good because we are starting to run low. And this one we're just gonna top rate right with the mozzarella since we don't have any more of the sauce left. And I'm gonna need a little more. Do you know what I missed adding? Yes. The spinach. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly strip off this top layer of noodles. I'm not too concerned if the matzah gets mixed in there. I really wanted the spinach in there. I just feel like 
spinach is perfect in this kind of thing. Let's layer some spinach on there. Okay, so I have some steamed uh, spinach here. So I'm just gonna lay some ste steamed spinach on the top of this. Okay, now our noodles back on. Okay, now we'll top with cheese. So I have decided I'm just going to smear a little ricotta on the top of this too, so there's a nice bubbly top, and then we'll top that with the with more mozzarella. So we'll just cover this up, because I mean, if you're gonna have lasagna, you might as well just go for it since it's all carbs and dairy. I must admit, I am starting to get a little bit tired. I am definitely looking forward to having a nap this afternoon. Little salt and some more mozzarella. So my plan at this point is I will set these lasagnas aside and then I'll bake them uh, before probably 45 minutes or so before our company is due to arrive. So I think what I'm gonna do here is make my Caesar salad dressing so it has a chance to sit in the fridge and all the flavors can meld. So I am going to use a quart jar for this because I wanna make a large batch of this dressing. This recipe I'm using is from a site called Once Upon a Chef. And for all of the recipes that I actually have, I'll link down in the show notes. Some of these I'm just kind of making up as I go, but for the recipes I do have, I will make sure I link them for you. So we're doubling this recipe. So we're gonna use four garlic cloves. Okay, minced garlic, two teaspoons of anchovy paste, four tablespoons of lemon juice, Fresh squeezed is of course better, but I don't have any right now. Two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Okay, into this. A little bit of salt. I sadly do not have Dijon mustard, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of yellow mustard in there. Not too much, because it's so strong flavor, but just a little. I'm going to add a cup of Parmesan. Okay, and some pepper. Give that a really good shake. Oh, that is so good. Yum. So now we'll just let this sit in the fridge until we need it. So now it is time to do some cleaning up then I am going to sit down and put my feet up because I am tired. <laughs> and then once I've had a rest, we will come back into the kitchen, we'll make our croutons and our ice cream. And then it's basically just putting everything together when our company gets here. So I'm excited about this, it's gonna be good, I hope. I am feeling much more refreshed. I have had a tea and a rest, feeling great. So now we have some bread all cut up into crouton sized bits here. We have some olive oil and butter mixed together over here. And we're going to coat our bread in that. And now we're gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. I have this mix that I bought at the Bulk Barn the other day, and this has some lemon in it, rosemary, a little bit of thyme. And I thought this would be really nice on our Crouton, so I'm just gonna add a little of that. It smells good. I think it could use a little bit more though. A little salt, and then we will spread these on some parchment lined sheets, and we'll bake them in the oven at 350 until they are dry and crispy. And I'm making some extras here too, so that I can just put them in a jar and we can use them at a later date. Okay, into the oven. So now I just have to cut up our romaine lettuce, get it into bowls. So this is gonna be a super simple Caesar salad. Just the romaine lettuce, the dressing, the croutons, and some Parmesan cheese. Actually, you know what I should do? I'm gonna cook up some bacon. Let's make some bacon bits. So I am going to cut up our lettuce right now so that it's just in the bowls and ready to go. And then, what do I have left to do? I have to pull up the ice cream machine. I already made up the ice cream custard. So I make mine with four cups or three cups of heavy cream, one cup of milk, 
a quarter to a half a cup of sugar, depending on how sweet I want it, a teaspoon of vanilla, and three to four egg yolks. And then I just heat up the milk on the stove, whisk in the egg yolks, making sure so that it doesn't boil because otherwise it will curdle. And then I let it chill until it is fully chilled through and then into my ice cream maker. And it just takes an hour in the ice cream maker. So that is, so dessert's virtually done at this point besides just running it through the machine, which is easy peasy. I don't know if anyone's gonna have room for dessert after this meal, <laughs> but we'll see. Okay, one bowl of lettuce down. So now I am going to shower and put on some clean clothes because I am a mess and then it's just kind of assembling everything and getting the lasagnas baked in the oven. We have some beautiful vanilla ice cream. So all I'm gonna do with this is put it into my ice cream container and then I'm going to dump this on the top and then swirl it in and pop it back in the freezer. And then we can kind of slice it almost like ice cream cake. So I think it's gonna be fantastic. Okay, swirl in our ice cream here. And we'll pour some of this on top. And dessert is done. I have the lasagnas in the oven. And here I have our garlic breads and we just rubbed garlic on these, coated them with some butter and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And we'll bake these in the oven till they get brown and crispy. So now we just have to wait for the lasagnas to cook and then I'll show you when everything's all done. All right, friends, I just wanted to show you the finished meal. Our guests are gonna be coming down the driveway any second. So we have our regular lasagna, our tuna lasagna, and our chicken lasagna bubbling away over here. Two loaves of bread for those who want plain bread with their food. We have our Caesar salads here ready to go. I just left the croutons out and the dressing here so people can dress it the way they like and I'll be popping these in just before we eat so they can be nice and hot, and then we'll have that ice cream with the strawberry sauce for dessert. I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me today, everyone. I really appreciate you being here, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.